Morning, it's Tuesday and uh, right out on the west coast, um, sort of South Cumbria. Um, I'm at this 14 ton zero tail swing for an oil leak. Uh, I've got an awful lot to do today. On the way down here, there's a micro digger stuck in a doorway. It uh, started smoking and then, uh, so the fella obviously turned the machine off and now it won't restart. I think that'll be a starter motor. So the parts man is gonna fetch a starter motor down to this site where I'm at now. Um, and then I can go on from here to, it'll only be 20 minutes away from where I'm at just now. Go and put that starter motor on. And hopefully I'll go and get this blooming uh, shovel serviced as well. It's desperate to be done. Um, it was, well, it's been booked in for today for about a week or so now. Um, so it has to be done today basically. There's a ship that they need to unload with it or something of that. It's all go and uh, there's another machine. The quick hitch has stopped working and that's the other side of the country. Um, but I've managed to get that machine going over the phone. It's all go. Could, <laughs> I could do without it. So you can see we're right on the coast. Over there, that's the very edge of the lake district. This oil leak. So that's that 14 ton of scene too. Um, the oil leak was engine oil coming out the breather pipe. The breather pipe goes into like a little metal cup um, sort of behind the counterweight. You can't really see it and off the bottom of that little metal cup there's a little quarter bit of fuel hose that runs off on just onto the belly plate. Um, and he noticed it yesterday when the machine was given a bit of hard work or given a bit of hard work um, when he was swinging back around there were spots of oil on his blade so what's been happening is that cup has been full of muck and that then stops the breather working as it should so then you end up building pressure in the crankcase which then forces oil out the breather um, so what I've done is I've pulled the pipe out of the little cup and I've laid it sort of somewhere that's visible because you can't see it where it's normally sat He's worked the machine up to working temperature and then sort of kept working it and I've kept an eye on it and it's breathing absolutely fine. There's no evidence of any oil. So we're going to leave that pipe there. I looked at the breather filter. The breather filter did have evidence of oil on it. It was damp, but it wasn't blocked. Um, and I've got my parts man coming down to this next job for me to bring a starter motor. He's also bringing a breather filter, which he'll drop off for this fella just to fire in as a precaution. Um, but yeah, he's gonna work away today and just keep an eye on it now that you can see where the breather pipe is. The engine didn't seem to be breathing heavily um, and that's all I think it's been, that, that breather pipe being blocked so it's caused a bit more crankcase pressure than normal, forcing oil out. Right. Uh, next job is, I don't know, I would imagine it's 15-20 minutes away but the sooner the better that I get there because I've still got best part of four or five hours of work to do on a loading shovel and then it'll be an hour and 40 minutes back up to Carlisle so I've got a lot to do today and I'm a long way from home. Right this is the state of the roads around here, 26 miles, 50 minutes to the next job. And the time is nine minutes past 11. Oh Lord. And I think I've got a feeling I'm gonna be going right past the road end to the quarry where I'm gonna be servicing this shovel. Oh, not good, not good. What a spot for this machine to stop. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but the smell of it, this starter motor's burnt out. It absolutely stinks of electrical burning. The guys said that there was a lot of smoke coming out of the engine, so obviously the first thing you do is switch it off. Um, so yeah, I've got a starter motor coming down from Carlisle. Um, I got him to set off with that 
mm, about 15 minutes away from where I was at that 140 and um, so he shouldn't be too far away he'll maybe be half an hour 40 minutes so with a bit of luck by the time we've got this one stripped out um he'll be turning up with the new one and worst case scenario is i can sit and have my lunch while i wait for him first things first then i'll take the battery lead off and then i've got the air filter to take off and the expansion bottle to take off oh good lord time is 10 past 12 so realistically half one i'd like this finished and uh, and it's half an hour back to the quarry to go and service that shovel great news i've got the starter motor off bad news starter motor isn't here yet but i'll go and have a sandwich so you can see it's an hour and 44 minutes um back up to where the yard is spoke to parts and I think he'd set off and that was at 10 to 11 so 10 to 11 10 to 12 even if it's two hours 10 to 1 it is now 25 to 1 so he should be here any minute now with this starter motor hopefully um yeah I'll have something to eat and I've got a lot of oil to change yet like Right, I've had my parts drop, it's all going on today. There's a machine back up the coast road uh, towards Whitehaven that's got E157-18 low rail pressure. So that's gonna be fuel filters. Um, parts lad's gonna head back to that 140 that I was at this morning and drop that breeder filter off for us. Then he's gonna go on up the coast road with two fuel filters that I've given him for that machine at Whitehaven and they can change the fuel filters themselves. I've got my starter motor here, I'll be half an hour putting that on and then uh, half an hour over to this quarry. It's all go, this phone today, I'm close to throwing it out the window like. Right, half one. We're, uh, we're getting the machine starting and running, it's all done. Need to pack up and get onto the next one. So our next one is 15 miles away, uh, 30 minutes, so two o'clock, four hours onto that minimum, six o'clock, an hour and 40 back, 7.30ish, that's if everything goes well. We'll find out though, won't we? What a day. What a day. Hey, I'm not one to complain. I'm not one to complain. Right, let's get to it. Finally here, uh, axe logels, hydraulic return filters, pilot filters, add blue filters, engine oil filters, fuel filters, return filters, uh, engine oil spinner filter, and, oh, he's not left a key in it for us. I'll go and grab mine. Right, I've got the boom set up so I can work underneath it safely. Um, I'll put some chocks under the wheels, which are there. And uh, yeah, we'll get a start. I'm sure you won't mind, but I'll put you on a time lapse uh, while I just kind of knuckle down and get sort of the worst of it done. And I'll catch back up with you in a moment or two. getting on well the front axle's still draining um, and I'm just putting engine oil back in it and I found believe it or not would you ever believe I found another use for this drum um, so I've cleaned it out obviously uh, that's where the oil spinner sits in and it is quicker to fill through the oil spinner 
um, but it's just awkward to get to and I cleaned out a couple of well I cleaned out me one of my waste funnels and that wouldn't just sit nicely but that's just ideal I just pour it in and once it reaches the level of the hole there it just pours itself in so yeah that took about two minutes whereas filling it from the filler side it takes oh 10-15 minutes of drum so I'm pleased I came up with that ingenious invention. Don't know what I'll do with, well, I suppose this is taking 38 litres and that's a five litre drum and the cap is at the, da, 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 da. yeah, the cap is sort of like in the middle. So that would roughly be about two and a half litres, wouldn't it? So really, if I pour another drum in it, let all it drain out to a level like that now, um, We'll go around and check, but that should be the full amount into the engine. I'm sure it's 38 litres. We'll find out in a minute. So uh, I've just done one hub on that side now. I'll do the other side once I've changed the return filters. Um, and that'll be that axle drained of oil. So I'll do the return filters, come down, put them in the bin, drain the other side hub. And while that's draining, I'll do exterior cab filter, put the bung back in it, do an add blue filter, put oil in there, drain the axle oil on the back, and we'll be getting somewhere like finished like flying, flying. So over on this side of the shawl, I'm standing on the ad blue tank at the minute, it'll get that breather, ad blue filter and an outer cab filter. Pull that out. Oh good. Happy days. Oh, this dust just turns to sludge look. Ugh. Right, I'll put the new one in. I'll need a second hand so bear with us. Service complete, it is, what time is it? Half past five. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the morning, won't I? Um, I better get going. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day to my wife. I'm gonna be late home. <laughs> oh God. Right, I'll see you in the morning all. Morning all, welcome back. It's, uh, what is it today? Wednesday morning. I'm at this um, Mechlark 800 roller. Uh, for a complaint that sometimes the rolls will vibrate and other times they won't. Um, so yeah, I've just jumped on it and gone around the, well, gone backwards and forwards on this bit of yard here. And sort of, if you to press the button 10 times, sort of eight times the vibrating plates will work. The other two times it won't. Um, now, cards on the table I don't know an awful lot about rollers um, so I'm sort of learning on the job but I spoke to one of my customers yesterday the fellow with the uh, 140 um, he just had a Terex dumper a uh, Terex roller delivered to site as I was leaving and I says oh I've got a roller to go and see tomorrow the vibrator won't work on it and uh, he gave us a crash course in what to look for on rollers, so thank you very much. Um, so yeah, it's quite similar to the Terex. His, his Terex was a 1999 model, um, and obviously Mechlac bought out Terex. 
Um, on his roller, he had a plate here, and he said, if you take that plate off, you can see all stuff working, all your inputs will light up. Anyway, this had a plate here, and got this doodah here, um, which seems like a little bit of a controller. So when I press the button to, on the top of the um, joystick there to select vibrate, that little red light comes on um, when you press the button down and then the yellow light comes on and when you let go of the button that little red light goes off now what's happening is occasionally you press the button and it doesn't set off vibrating and when i've been looking at that light when i've been pressing it sometimes that red light's staying on so i've pulled all this up um, and you can see this is the wiring for this button here and what i found is occasionally it's not going to do it for me now on camera. There, occasionally it stays on like that. And that keeps that red light illuminated, but it's sort of wanting, it's waiting for you to depress the button to set the roller off, uh, vibrating. Um, so that red light would stay illuminated and it wouldn't illuminate that yellow light to put an output to the solenoid to uh, set the um, vibrating plates off. So I've determined that that button is faulty now um how see i can't deselect it now how i'm gonna replace i don't think that button will come separately i think i'll probably have a whole assembly to replace but yeah that's what i found fair please with myself like i am so I'll put this back together, let the lads on site know what the crack is. Obviously, I haven't, got a, I haven't got a joystick on the van and I doubt we'll have one in stock at Carlisle. Um, so we'll get one ordered up and come back out and fit it. I'm going to go back to Carlisle, I can get rid of all this stuff. I just set off straight from home this morning because this job is sort of my side of town. Like, Although I'm not anywhere near town, I'm about half an hour away. Um, so yeah, jobs are good then. On to the next one, after I've put all this back together. So, DX210 this afternoon. Now that I've got round all my breakdowns that have happened over the last two days, it's back to servicing again. So, um, this 210 is on 265 hours. It's only 15 hours over its first service. Um, just an engine oil and filter change and a hydraulic return filter and pilot filter. Um, Fuel filters, final drives, all that sort of stuff will do at 500. So, yeah, not much more to add to that. Um, this machine's going to be flat out. There's a massive, behind me here, there's a massive pile of rubble um, that is to crush. So, he's going to have it serviced, ready for the next few days, sat on top of a heap load and a crusher. So, I'll start the machine, let it warm up, and then. Uh, We'll get some oils dropped. So a DX210, um, I've been asked in the past what's the difference between a DX210 and a DX225. So it's only in these Dash 7 series machines that we've got the DX210. Previously you would have the DX225. We've still got the DX225 so what's the difference? The 210 uh, has an operating weight of 22.4 tonnes. The DX225-7 has an operating weight of 23.3, I think it was. Um, so there's almost a ton difference in operating weight. Um, but the biggest difference is the hydraulic system. So the hydraulic system in this machine is pretty similar to the outgoing DX225-5. Um, and that's quite a simple hydraulic system uh, in my opinion. The, D the new DX225 has got a VBO hydraulic system which we'd have seen in larger operating machines like the sort of 34 plus ton machines they had a VBO system. Um, to put it into layman's terms this 210 would have your manual gearbox and your 225-7 would have an automatic gearbox or Another way to put it, um, if you're into tractors, 
your 210 would have a power shift gearbox and your 225 would have like a Vario gearbox. The hydraulic system's completely different. Um, and would you notice the difference if you were operating a 210 and jump off it and go into a 225? Yeah, you would. Um, the 225 is, it's a bit like power on demand uh, when you're working it. So I think it's a lot more fuel efficient. Um, the when I've just looked at the specs there just because I've always been asked and the main difference is the hydraulic system so that's normally my answer but I've looked at the specs the engines the same the rated horsepower on the 225-5 is 166 the rated horsepower on the 210 is 168 <laughs> so whether that's enough to make much of a fuel saving I'm not sure but like I say, if you've been operating a 225-5 uh, and you're happy with the 225-5, the sort of obvious move is to go to the 210. If you want a little bit more out of your machine and you've got sort of deeper pockets, then uh, go for the 225-7. Um, and that's the differences, really. The width of the machine is slightly narrower on the 210. And that's probably where the sort of ton operating weight comes from. Uh, slightly narrower, but uh, yeah, it seems to be coping well on this site. He's ripping up a great big concrete slab. Uh, he's heaped it all up and it's to crush. So yeah, machine seems to be on top of the job. Right, that'll be my engine arm just about drained out. So I'll go and spin a few filters and uh, there's a little uh, recall to do on this machine as well. So I'll get a look at that. Yeah, as much as I enjoy chatting to folk while I'm working away, it's nice to be on a site all by yourself, just working away quietly. I am happy in my own company. <laughs> it's a good job as well. Yeah, that day yesterday. So I've never really paid it much attention, but when I um, when I looked through the trip thing on my van. If you keep scrolling, you can see how many hours driving you've done in total um, and how many hours driving since you first strike the van up to when you switch it off. It must reset after it's seen like a, a 12 hour period or something like that, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, yesterday it was six hours and 19 minutes driving. Um, I should have looked at that day when I was up on the north coast there, uh, northeast coast, uh, when I had that VCU problem last Friday because I bet there was some driving time that day and it was a long day as well. Um, yeah, it was half past nine when I got back last Friday. Days like that when you do really question your career choices. <laughs> but then you think back to all the good days that you have and it is, uh, it's a good sense of achievement like when you've being a machine that won't do something and you get it going, it's a good sense of achievement, like um, you get a bit of a buzz, especially those jobs where you know somebody else has been at it for two or three days and you go in there and you sort it within a couple of hours and yeah, it's good, like I enjoy it. Right, that's this pump bay finished with, engine oil and pilot filter done. Just got the uh, return filter in the tank and we'll chuck some engine oil in it. in the yard now from servicing i've just emptied the van um i've loaded up for tomorrow i'm gonna do some of those some more of those um engine oil pressure sensor recall jobs um on those mechalac dumpers i've got three to do tomorrow uh there's another mechalac dumper that wants a safety certificate um as well um and then there's another one that wants a handbrake adjusting so um that's what I'm going to busy myself with tomorrow because I just fancy a break from servicing. I've got a few big services on the horizon of a 30 ton digger, 
420 shovel, 350 shovel. Um, so I'll have a rest from, I'll have a rest from servicing, I will. I'll round the video up at that for today. Um, and yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching and hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. Have a nice evening and we'll see you at the back end of the week.